Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. Mr. Terry is a continuing research for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, we're finally getting around to finishing up the extra history series on the Inca Empire. So this is the fifth and final episode, and it is titled A God Taken Hostage. Ooh, so I guess we're talking about Atahualpa there, who is the emperor of the Inca Empire and also seen as a god, which is... Um, common in the history of this region so we'll see that um see it kind of i guess come to an end for this inca empire at the hands of the spanish and the disease and the warfare that came along with it so um excited to go ahead and uh, end this right here on a good note so if you uh, haven't seen the original video make sure you also go down in the description the original video link is down below and be sure to check that out extra history does awesome they do a lot of these little mini series of like five six episodes that's a really great way to, uh, great way to take in a um a concept they have all kinds of different things across world history so all right let's go ahead and get started <clears throat> november 15 1532 cajamarca hernando de soto has just made official contact with atualpa and it is not going well atualpa's first words are a rebuke I am told you have killed my people and hmm. put them in chains. Not says, true. Not or not. An iron not lying. Roof. De Soto denies this truth, and Atahualpa invites them to eat. The Spaniards decline food, but agree to sit and drink chicha beer. They're sloppy and spill the drink. A deep affront. Suddenly inspired, De Soto offers a display of horsemanship in return. He canters around the square, cutting and prancing on his strange beast. <laughs> Look what I can do! Charging straight at the emperor. 20 feet, 15, 10. He reins in, so close that the horse's breath flutters the tassels on Atualpa's royal headband. Atualpa stands impassive, and the guards who broke ranks to defend him are immediately executed. So I heard about I heard about this. Um, <clears throat> this was done, yeah, basically in secrecy, and we'll see if they get to it, but one of the, they said was the things that happened at this um, um, meeting up was also the fact that Atahualpa um, apparently didn't have his guards armed. He didn't feel that was uh, like a necessary thing to show that kind of force, or for whatever reason, it didn't have that, which ends up being a, a bad idea for what you're about to see. But maybe that was a reason why the Spanish did do this kind of surprise attack. But yeah, there was this. It was supposed to be this famous thing where. You know, the horse comes up to him. And remember, Atahualpa and these guys, they haven't seen horses really very much. It'd be very scary, I think, to to come across a horse <laughs> when you never see anything like that. But, like, came up to his face and, like, the famous thing was that Atahualpa didn't even flinch. He was just, like, stoic there, showing his determination that way. True Incas <laughs> do not flinch. Right. Cool. Yeah. Now, I don't... Oh, man. The next day. There's a story I want to tell, but I want to make sure they cover it. Walpa visits Pizarro at De Soto's invitation. The Spanish have camped in an empty city square. Upon his arrival, men sweep the ground before him. Soldiers carry ceremonial axes, and priests and dancers sing praises. Atahualpa himself rides in on a towering litter carried by eighty men. Like you do. Gold like plates you do. on its surface reflecting the dying sun. Macaw feathers ripple in the Andean wind. He has nothing to fear. There are only 168 yeah. of these foreigners, and he has 8,000 in his unarmed party. Not to unarmed, so they are getting to this this other story that I was just saying. Unarmed. Let's remember that. 8,000 soldiers waiting in the hills, but no one is here to meet them. The square is empty, save for the translator from the day before, and a man in long robes. This translator is not Incan, some low-class sailor from the northern coastal villages who barely speaks Quechua, and Atahualpa suspects this man's grasp of Spanish is just basic. But from what he makes out, this robed man is a priest. He has come from a great okay. king and wants the Inca to accept his god. Okay, this was the story I was, if you're wondering if I never got to, this was the story that I wanted to tell. It's uh, it's one we, in my EP classes, um, I give sources on this, uh, conflicting sources about this exact meeting that's about to happen because it is debatable about how this meeting with the priest goes. The priest waves some kind of box, claiming that it contains the word of this god. Intrigued, Atualpa asks to see it. He listens to the box, but hears nothing. And slowly, with great difficulty, he manages to open it. But he finds no divine voice inside. Oh now do you see what 
the miscommunication is. I'm sure they're going to get to it. By the way, one of the debated things I've heard was if he actually held it up to his ear. Because, again, this priest has told him, this contains the word of God. Right? Now, what you have to understand is this. The Inca don't have a writing system. They don't know. They haven't seen writing. They don't know what a book. Uh, Altawapa here. He doesn't know what a book is. So when he hears something like and translated, however it would have, we would have thought of it very literal as this is the word of God. And then if he did hold it up to his ear, it's like, what am I listening for? Like he thinks he's supposed to hear some deity, and of course doesn't hear it. So this is like an epic commun uh, um, failure in communication as a result of two different civilizations developing completely independent from each other. Only sheets of cloth covered in patterns. Angry at this deception, he tosses the box on the ground. Yep. The priest runs towards the buildings, yep. screaming about his god being blasphemy. Designed. Thunder cracks, and the ranks near the emperor erupt in a fountain of gore. Yeah, so it was like he. he I think he. Ba I think he basically says like, "This thing is worthless." Right? I don't hear this god. I don't hear these words that you're speaking of, and then throws it. Right, which to this priest was extremely offensive. He doesn't understand that, like the perspective at all from Atahualpa, um, because he doesn't know what this is. Because he's like, dude, I am a god. Like I'm a god of you know. You're saying this. This is words of God. Like I am a god. Like it's a total misunderstanding. That is nobody's fault. It's just how these civilizations have developed separately from each other. But yep, it's about to get ugly. I'm gonna go back five seconds because I talked over that. Oh. Thunder cracks, and the ranks near the emperor erupt in a fountain of gore. More bangs and jets of smoke from the buildings around them. An ambush. Forty infantry yep. in their metal shirts cut off the exits. Then, sixty men on monstrous beasts, some covered head to foot in metal, charge the back of the Inca ranks. What weapons the Inca carry are ceremonial. The few soldiers carrying real slings and axes find the foreign armor impervious to their weapons. Yeah. Incans have never seen horses and have no anti-cavalry tactics. There's no escape. Within minutes, hundreds die by Spanish blades or fall crushed under iron horseshoes. One group of panicked attendants surge against an adobe wall so densely that it collapses, spilling fleeing Jeez. men into the hills. These few escape, but 7,000 others die in the massacre. Atualpa tries to escape to his litter, but too many of the bearers are dead, and the Spanish are stripping the gold plates from its surface. <laughs> it tilts and falls. Literally, like, ripping the gold off. Like, this is what these Spaniards are about. Ripping the gold off of the throne and this whole thing. A soldier on horseback towers above him. Huge. Suddenly, his sword flashes down. But a man throws himself between the emperor and the blade. Ooh, and takes the blow on his own arm. It's Francisco Pizarro. Ah. And this cut will be the only wound the conquistadors take in what they will later call a battle. Pizarro now holds I never heard of that the emperor, which is good for the conquistadors because despite the fact that he has cannons, armor, horses, and muskets, he still only has a hundred and sixty right men to defend yeah like Cajamarca you... against eighty thousand right that's where we can sit there and say oh they had this amazing technology and stuff and they did with the armor, the horses, the guns, and all that. Um, but it's still one hundred sixty-eight to potentially eighty thousand. I, I don't care what technology you have, right? So, how does this turn out the way it does? It was, Atualpa realized, a hostage situation. These Spanish wanted gold. And gold was yeah. something the emperor could provide. So he walked into a room that measured 20 feet by 15 feet and made a chalk line 8 feet up the wall. If you release me, he said, I will fill this room with treasure, twice over with silver and once with gold. It would take time, but it could be done. Pizarro agreed, not only because Jeez. he wanted the gold, though, yeah, he wanted that gold pretty bad, gold! but because a pause in hostilities let him send to Panama for reinforcements. But mm, this just happened to time. be Atahualpa's plan, too. For eight months, as the treasure flowed in, he continued running his empire through intermediaries. Wow. Slow. So I had heard of the story about them filling up a room. I had no idea it took that long. I don't know. I thought they were just like, go get the storage, the gold from the storage, and they filled it up right away. I know it took like eight months. But again, it looks, like it looks like it's playing into both their hands. Both want reinforcements here. He organized an army to drive the Spanish out once he was released. But right. he ran into a problem. The half of the empire that had backed Huasca in the Civil War perceived Flip. the Spanish as liberators. Yep. Yet this perception did not last long. 
As Pizarro toured the country under royal protection, his disgust with the Incan religion became ever more clear. <sighs> In one instance, he ordered his men to climb the temple of the earthquake god and throw the god's image off the top, followed by all of the priests. When Atualpa heard about this, his reaction was strong and immediate. He loved it. Yeah, because you see, the temple had issued a prophecy that Huasca would win the civil war, and he was glad to see his brother's followers cast down. In fact, his captive brother had met with Pizarro and offered the Spanish an alliance if they'd kill Atualpa, free him, and install him as ruler instead. But Atualpa nipped trying to follow this well by having Huascar assassinated. Meanwhile, Atualpa So it just goes back to like a like a prophecy, I guess, of that. This is so weird, huh? To, to follow that. Now I'd heard about, you know, when you Go back to how the Spanish deal with these um, Native American empires. You'll see that what was similar with Hernan Cortez when he um, goes to Mexico and conquers the Aztec Empire. He did the same thing, which was you go, you went and found all the people that don't like the empire, right? Which in both cases, Inca and Aztec was vast. They, they had plenty of people they hated. Remember, too, that um, the Spanish that went down to the Inca Empire in South America had come across this region just after a civil war. So it was especially ripe for the Spanish to be able to find people that might be able to join him, um, which is going to provide the fighting force that they need. Right. So we we're talking about how that 168 is not enough. And when you're talking about thousands and thousands and these recruited or whatever you want to call them um, natives make up by far the biggest part of the these fighting forces. Befriended his captors, learned to play chess with De Soto, and began dining with Pizarro. The conquistadors, for their part, became fascinated with the Inca ruler, with his mm. fine bat skin clothes, many wives, and noble bearing. Though Pizarro never dreamed of actually letting Atualpa go, of course. He was the only thing stopping them from being completely wiped out. But he had become attached to the man. He wanted to take him to Spain as a royal hostage. But factions began to emerge in the Spanish ranks. Once the ransom was collected and divided, Pizarro's expedition partner, Diego de Almagro, was unhappy with his men's take. They're also Moreover, greedy. Almagro was distrustful of Atualpa and argued for his immediate execution. Surrounded and cut off, Pizarro could not afford dissension in the ranks. So when presented with evidence that Atualpa was raising armies, Pizarro convened a trial and convicted the Inca emperor of treason against the Spanish crown. <laughs> okay. So he had a choice. What, by what authority does he have this? It's like, you think you have jurisdiction here, Pizarro? Burn at the stake or convert to Christianity and be strangled with a cord. Atualpa, who wanted to keep his body whole so he could live out eternity as a venerated mummy, chose the cross and the cord. Killing the emperor was a bad idea. With Atualpa dead, chaos descended. Even after the Spanish had subdued the country, they would face between 20 to 30 rebellions. In okay, so so hold on. You know, I'd heard that they, they did strangle him to death. They garroted him. I don't know about the idea was the what he does, some kind of like deathbed, force him to do some kind of deathbed conversion to save his soul or something like that. I hadn't heard of that part, but... You know, you forget a lot of these times, it, 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 we, this stuff has been so obsessed with money, right? Gold and all that. But with these groups, how devoutly, like, Catholic they were and how serious they were about these people converting. It's like, it, you can't separate the two. They feel it's one and the same. Maybe that's one of the reasons they feel they're so deserving of looting these civilizations is because they have some kind of God-given right or something, but... Um, amazing to see these things happen. In the first two decades of their rule, they installed two puppet emperors, the first dying of smallpox before they even got him to Cusco, and the yeah. second shared power for three years before escaping to found a neo-Inca state no in the Peruvian to Amazon, hold me where down. Sapa Incas would reign for four more decades. Twice rebel armies besieged Cusco, and once even in the new Spanish capital of Lima, but the Incan resistance could not be sustained. Yeah. The Spanish learned that if they just held out long enough, Incan armies would dissolve once the crops needed to be brought in. Not to mention, the a Incan disease. practice of generals leading from the front was really not practical when facing an enemy armed with cannons and <laughs> firearms. <laughs> Spanish so, 
Yeah, you don't put your generals in the front because they're the first ones to go in this type in this type of warfare uh, with like ranged warfare and stuff that the Inca probably weren't uh, used to. You can't put those you can't put the important people up front that way. Jeez. Government went about destroying Incan culture through forced conversion and cultural destruction. They raised temples and built churches on their Literally. foundations. Yep. They melted down every. Gosh, that's so disappointing. <sighs> that of what the Spanish did to, I mean, everybody in the New World, like destroying these sites, then putting their own crap right on top of it. These temples, these amazing places. And feeling justified and taking them out and then putting your own crap right on top of this superiority complex. It just like as, as appreciators of history and culture, it's, it's terrible. It's really terrible. Object, remaking them into altarpieces or sending them back to Spain. And they confiscated and buried the royal mummies. But Pizarro and his men Gosh. had their own problems. The Spanish crown was horrified at Atahualpa's execution. Pizarro and his really? men were technically just peasants after all. And under no circumstances could they allow a bunch of peasants to commit regicide. Who cared if Atahualpa was a foreign idol worshiper? Killing a king set a bad precedent. And also, Pizarro's Yay. relationship with Almagro deteriorated further. The Spanish crown had made Almagro the governor of southern Peru and Pizarro the governor of northern Peru, but was vague about who truly governed Cusco. Soon, the conquistadors oh, were geez. fighting with each other, as well as the Incas. And when Pizarro finally killed his rival, the man's son took up the feud. Eight years after conquering Peru, Eight 20 men stormed later. Pizarro's mansion in Lima. As friends died to protect him, the old man managed to find a sword and half-buckle his breastplate. He killed the first two attackers, but when he ran a third through, the flesh trapped his blade, and the assassins fell on him. Pizarro, the man who'd toppled an empire for gold and Christianity, and whose conquest killed millions through disease, yeah. starvation, and violence, died on the floor of his governor's mansion, calling for Jesus and drawing a cross in his own blood. The wow. Inca I didn't know that. Survived him. Because I didn't know. I didn't know how um, the end of his life. I had never heard of that. That's even more interesting. Ironically, the Spanish repression had rehabilitated the Inca's reputation. Groups who chafed under Incan rule began looking back on it as a golden age and told stories of Inca folk heroes standing up for the people. Like, it in wasn't fact, so if bad. You then. Visit Peru today, you'll see the Inca legacy in textiles, cultural recreations, sure. political movements, they and appreciate even it. They love of it. Soda. Their monuments, their roads, and their history are a source of pride, even in areas where they were originally considered foreign yeah. occupiers. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense when you look at what happened. They're like, with these descendants, like, yeah, we hated the Inca, but holy crap, the Spanish were way worse. Reappreciate, you know, appreciate it till it's gone, right? Once, Peru had belonged to the Incas, but today, the Incas belong to Peru. See you next time, everybody. Special thanks to educational tier. Okay, let's talk about it. All right, so, yeah, I mean, it was the, the tragic end that we expected, if you know about the um basically the end of Atahualpa and the Inca Empire with the different reasons that they were able to be the Spanish were able to be successful in my class I kind of I, I kind of break it down this way for my students that I want them to be able to know kind of an order from <coughs> um least important to most important reasons um, least important and in, in, and in three reasons here. Least important of the three reasons, but was still was still important. The military superior superiority of the Spanish. So that that meant is their uh, steel, you know, swords, their armor, their guns, cannons, horses. Okay, you know, important, but not by far. There's far more important things. Second would be the alliances that they created because uh, they were severely outnumbered in both the Aztec case and the Inca case. Um, the, the Spanish were heavily outnumbered, thousands, thousands to one. And in both scenarios, they were able to recruit descent or, uh, people that had kind of dissented from, you know, the Aztec or the, um, Inca empire and had their own issues with them and were able to be recruited, which made up the bulk of the fighting force that took down these empires. But, and they, they alluded this to do, but I still, I think it needs to be stressed a lot more is the disease. Right, disease is what's going to do everybody in. Uh, remember, disease probably killed ninety percent of the native population here. And interestingly, that's the unplanned, unintended consequence of all this 
from the disease again from the fact that these two civilizations developed biologically different from each other and with the europeans bringing over diseases that only existed over in the uh in eurasia those people in, uh, in in the americas were not immune to those and that more than anything is what finished off these empires um in the end and and made this all possible so again going back to what i was saying a few minutes ago it's it's you know tragic and should be looked upon that way about what ended up happening to these cultures especially with the with their history and the intended efforts of the spanish to destroy historical sites historical records and has left a gaping hole in understanding the history of these peoples that um we'll never recover from right that because it's once it's gone it's gone when it comes to this archaeology so i think it's an important lesson going forward and um you know with these types of things that uh, preserving history even if it's your enemy is important um for whatever reason that is well anyways this series was awesome this is uh one of the series that had been recommended to me recommended to me right when i started my channel that it was it was a big one and this got voted on uh when i did this what a over over a month a month ago a month or two ago i put this up to a poll on, um and of of about four or five different extra history series and this one won and for good reason i thought it was great i learned a bunch of new stuff and i love uh um the history of the uh, americas especially pre-columbian and up to the, the the arrival of europeans i love it and um, and i know too like i said that with this destroyed history that there's still a lot to learn and it's one of the places we need to still keep doing a lot of historical work and so hopefully you can be one uh if you you know any more professional historians to head down there because we just keep finding new stuff all the time to change our perception of these cultures so all right with that the original video link is down below also some links to my other some other stuff my gaming channel my discord uh discord server teespring where you can get cool history related merch um it's all down there for a lot of fun all right and we'll see you guys next time bye